Let's create a simple case structure example. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to write a VI which can either add or subtract two numbers based on the value of a Boolean. So let's start off and we'll create our two input numbers, a numeric control A and a numeric control B. And we'll create a numeric indicator, which is the result. Now we also need a Boolean control. I'm going to choose a vertical toggle switch. We're going to call this mode. We're going to right click on the Boolean control to display the Boolean text. Move that text off to the side and name it appropriately. So we have all the pieces we need on our front panel, so let's now turn our attention to the block diagram code. The case structure is available in the structures palette. Just like with for loops and while loops, it's created by dragging a region inside the block diagram. Notice here we have two important pieces. At the top is a list of all of our cases, and at the side is our case selector terminal. The case selector terminal is what decides which of the cases run. In this case, we're going to use our Boolean mode control to decide which case runs. Because it is a Boolean, there are only two possible cases, true and false, and LabVIEW by default has created a case structure with two cases. So, referring back to our mode control, if the Boolean value is true, then we wish to do a subtraction. So let's place a subtract operation in the true case. We're going to take our A input and our B input and put the result out into our indicator. Notice here that it has automatically created a tunnel, and that tunnel is a hollow box. If we were to try and run the VI at this moment, we'll find that the block diagram has an error because there's a missing assignment to the tunnel. When using the case structure, the output must always have a value, regardless of which case is running. Right now, in the false case, there is no defined value being passed out to the result, therefore the block diagram has an error. Observe now that when we finish the code for the false case, Once the output of the add operation is connected to the tunnel, then the tunnel is satisfied and the VI is able to run. So now if we were to put values here, if we run it in subtract mode, we see that the result is minus 2. If we run it in add mode, we see that the result is 12. In this example, we've used a Boolean as our case selector. It's also possible to use different types of data as our case selectors. If we replace our mode boolean with a string control, notice how the case structure is now being fed by a pink wire, of course representing the string, and now our cases are defined to be false and true, but this time with quotes around them, indicating that they represent the strings. What we want to do now is we want to define three possible cases. Add, subtract, and multiply. Notice that because we replaced our Boolean control with a string control, the existing code was not removed. We just need to redefine this from being the true case now to being the subtract case. Similarly, for the false case, we need to rename this one to be the add case. Notice now we have our two cases, add and subtract, so we need to add an additional one. If we right-click on the controller at the top of the case structure, we have a variety of options for manipulating cases. We can add cases after or before the selected one. We can duplicate the selected one. We can delete the selected one. What we want to do here is let's duplicate the add case. We're going to call this one multiply. We're going to just replace our add function with the multiply function. So now we have our three cases, add, multiply, and subtract. Notice that our VI is broken. 
If we list the errors, we'll see the case structure is complaining that there are no cases for some selector values. Remember that for a string, there are an infinite number of possibilities. We've only defined three possible cases. As it is now, the VI would run fine if we ran it in add mode. But what would happen if someone typed divide into the mode control? The case structure would not know which one to go to. As a result, that's why the VI is broken. What we need is to define one case to be the default case that captures any undefined strings. What we're going to do is let's add a case after the subtract case. We will just type in default. Alternately, we could add a case after, right click on it, and say make this the default case. So this is the case where the operation is undefined. So what we're going to put in our result is just a constant that says minus 999. In addition, let's put a one button dialog on to inform the user invalid selection. Notice now that we have our default case defined and our tunnel properly fed from every case. Now we can run the VI. So if we run it now with divide mode defined, we get invalid selection and a result of minus 999. If we change our mode to add, then we get the right result. If we change our mode to multiply, then we also get the right result. A third option, instead of using either a boolean or a string as the case selector, is to use a numeric. If we replace our string with the numeric control, we will change its representation to be an I32. We'll just write a little scheme here. 0 equals add, 1 equals subtract, 2 equals multiply. Notice now that we've replaced the mode from a string to be a numeric now. The wire is blue, and again our cases have changed. Add is no longer a valid case for a numeric input, and that's why it's indicated in red. We want this add case now to be case 0. Similarly, let's replace the multiply case with 2 and the subtract case with 1. It's important to note that every possible input value must be defined. Here, because we have a default case, that requirement is met. Another very useful method to define the default case, particularly for numerics, is to use the following notation. Since we have 0, 1, and 2 defined, if we have case 3, or 4, or 5, in fact, if we have 3 dot dot, LabVIEW understands that to mean all the values between 3 and infinity. Also, we must define all the values between minus infinity and minus 1. This is a very convenient notation to use when defining cases for numerics. Notice here that case 0, 1, and 2 have been defined as our add, subtract, and multiply, and then our catch-all, or our default case, is dot dot minus 1 and 3 dot dot. Notice how if we had chosen 4 dot dot, that we still have an error. We still have a no case defined for some selector values, because in this case, the value 3 is not properly defined. And of course, if we were to test it with mode 1, we see our subtraction. The final point to discuss is that there's another option besides defining the output for every tunnel in every case. If we hadn't defined minus 999 here, we have our hollow tunnel and we have our broken run icon. If we were to right click on this tunnel, we could choose to use default if unwired. 
This is a convenient method to avoid having to wire up every single case. If use default if unwired is selected, then the value will always be zero for numerics, empty string for strings, and false for booleans. And for whatever other data type you're going to use, it will be the appropriate combination of arrays or clusters of those data types.